Hello, my name is Mark McComb, Technical Training Engineer in the Security, Microcontroller, and Technology Division here at Microchip. Thank you for viewing this web seminar detailing a few design guidelines for Microchip's capacitive M-Touch sensing solutions. The discussion presented here assumes that you have viewed the previous web seminar, Introduction to M-Touch Capacitive Touch Sensing. The main points from that web seminar will be briefly reviewed for clarity including the functional characteristics of a capacitive M-Touch sensing solution along with basic touch sensor construction. The primary focus here is to provide some basic design guidelines as they relate to touch sensor pad size, placement, cover plate material selection, and mounting recommendations. First, let's take a moment to review the basic components of Microchip's capacitive M-Touch sensing solution. As discussed in the Introduction to M-Touch Capacitive Touch Sensing web seminar, a copper sensor pad is created on a printed circuit board that will produce a capacitance in conjunction with grounds located elsewhere in the design. A covering plate is secured over the pad to create a touch surface. Touching the covering plate over a pad creates an additional parallel capacitance essentially coupled to ground. This adds to the overall capacitance generated by the touch sensor, which will be used to detect a finger press. The capacitance generated by the touch sensor is used in conjunction with a dual comparator with SR latch peripheral found on newer PIC MCUs, along with external components to generate a relaxation oscillator. The operation of this oscillator is discussed in great detail in the Introduction to M-Touch Capacitive Touch Sensing web seminar and should be referenced for more information. Suffice to say that this configuration will generate an oscillation on the Q-bar output of the SR latch. The frequency of oscillation will be determined by the capacitance generated by the M-Touch sensor represented here by C sub S. Alone, the touch sensor generates a particular frequency of oscillation. The frequency of the oscillator is then measured in a fixed interval using both timer 0 and timer 1 peripherals. Any shift due to a user's touch is detected and validated in software. However, this isn't the end of the story. Some design guidelines will need to be considered when developing any capacitive M-Touch sensing application. The basic capacitance equation we have looked at in previous web seminars will be used as a reference for most of the design guidelines introduced here. Looking closely at the variables that make up this equation, you may notice that each could be easily altered depending on the implementation of this technology in your design. For example, the size of our touch sensor pad will have a huge impact on the capacitance generated by the sensor. The greater the area, the greater the capacitance. Therefore, increasing the area proportionally increases the capacitance, allowing better detection and sensitivity. Notice that this equation does not take into consideration the shape of the pad. This means that some latitude can be taken when going for a more aesthetically appealing pad design. So how big should your pad be? As a very general rule of thumb, the area of the pad should be about the size of the average fingertip, approximately half an inch by half an inch. Typically, we will be implementing more than one touch button in an application. Therefore, another factor to consider is the proximity of adjacent touchpad sensors to each other. Here an exaggerated side view of two touch sensor pads are shown along with the printed circuit board and covering plate. Once a finger press is introduced, a capacitance large enough to trigger a false press on a nearby sensor could be generated if positioned too close to the target sensor. In this situation, two of the variables from the capacitance equation are considered, area in the numerator and distance in the denominator, as they both relate to the finger press. 
Moving the nearby sensor away from the target sensor will increase the distance value in the capacitance equation in relation to the finger press. Also note that the area variable will also decrease due to simple geometry, contributing to a further decrease in capacitance. Therefore, to minimize the sensitivity of nearby sensors to a finger press, adjacent sensors should be placed appropriately. Maintaining a distance of around a quarter of an inch between adjacent sensors should provide sufficient insulation from the finger. An alternate method of decreasing nearby sensor sensitivity is the introduction of a ground trace between adjacent sensors. With the ground trace so close to each touch sensor pad, a larger base capacitance is generated. The capacitance generated with the introduction of a finger press will therefore have less of an effect on the percent shift of the oscillator frequency. This attenuation can be manipulated by altering the area of the ground trace. The greater the area of the ground trace, the greater the attenuation. Yet another solution is to create a relief in the covering material between adjacent sensors, introducing air into the space. Since air has a very low dielectric constant, or E sub R, closer to 1, a very small capacitance is created within the gap in series with the capacitance on the nearby sensor. The total of both capacitances therefore approaches the smaller air gap capacitance, minimizing the chance of a false trigger on the nearby sensor. Once the sensor pad design has been optimized, we now need to consider the traces that connect them to the PIC microcontroller. Shown in this slide is a touch sensor pad on the top side of the printed circuit board. Directly beneath the pad is a via connecting to a copper trace. There is a chance that a system could be sensitive enough that a finger pressed directly above a trace could trigger a button press detection on the associated sensor. There are a couple of solutions for this. The first is dealt with in software by experimenting with sensor thresholds in the button press detection algorithm. However, some caution must be used when using this method, as setting thresholds too aggressively could reduce reliability for different users. Note that each user will produce a different capacitive shift. The second method introduces a ground pad placed directly opposite the trace. This solution works, but remember, a decrease in the distance between ground and sensor will increase the sensor's base capacitance. Therefore, it is suggested that traces be routed away from areas that have the potential of coming into contact with finger presses. Another consideration with trace placement is in relation to other sensors on the board. In this slide, Two adjacent touchpad sensors are positioned so that the trace from sensor 1 passes directly below sensor 2. 